Good morning, this is Sinta Eberson from Fair Divorce in South Africa. And we are celebrating, or not some celebrating, commemorating International Day for Missing Children. And we're having conversations with alienated parents and parents who went through divorce, whose children actually went missing. As you are aware, many children are literally abducted uh, when uh, people are going through a divorce because of high conflict and various other reasons. And with me here is to discuss this, Jonas Dahl. He's going to share his story with us. So welcome, Jonas, and thank you for joining us. Well, please, just, for uh, please just tell us briefly where you are from and then uh, share your story with us. Uh, well, I'm a Norwegian 47-year-old man by now. Um, I was... Uh, um, divorced in 2015 and um, it was quite problematic and I ended up moving to Croatia. So I live in Rijeka and uh, I have a little plan to, to go into research on parental alienation because it's, it's such a big problem and, uh, and I'm affected personally by it. So I have motivation to go in that direction. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is your story? Did you do you have a personal story experience of children going missing? Yeah. Well, uh, we had uh, a divorce in 2015, and then we had a let's say a pretty good deal uh, of shared uh, living, 60 percent, 40 percent, and uh, we had a 13 year 13 years of marriage in front of that, so there was no big drama but um, you see in Norway the it's it's a little peculiar because you can if, if you if one of the parents well in 90 percent of the cases it's the women but if they if they take the kids and deny them any contact with their father they can then just go to the authorities and say that well I have the kids all the time so now I need this money as well and then they actually forcefully take it from your account. Okay. So, so it, yeah, yeah. So, so it's and then of course you you get frustrated and and uh, and uh, I was angry, of course, and um, and in the end uh, this just uh, um, gets worse and worse. And when we get to the court case. Uh, uh, I was already uh, bankrupt because of uh, her business dealings, which led to the divorce in the first place. So um, I tried to do the the court case uh, being my own solicitor. Uh, this failed, of course, um, and in the process, we had a psychologist who who broke, okay, let, let me tell this. But later in the process, I actually got a lawyer, you know, a very good one. And mm -hmm. she came in because I was so desperate that, I, that I, I, I did anything I could do to get the lawyer. And she came in uh, halfway through the process and she told me that they had broken the laws, they had broken the, the, the customary way of doing things in court in these cases and but it was it was uh, it was a disaster actually and and then I sort of broke down so and then I hadn't seen my kids since well I haven't spoken to them and I haven't had not even them not even by mail since June 5th uh, 2018. So that's three years now in just a few days. And, and so, it's Jonas, if I can just interrupt you. Yeah. Um, uh, so you haven't seen him at all since 2018? No, not even a phone call, not SMS, okay. no postcards, no nothing. All right. And all, how old are they? Are they young children? Are they teenagers? Just give us an no, idea. No, no, no. Um, you see, my ex-wife, she, she had a, her own business running a, um, a ballet and jazz and, you know, modern and, and uh, aerobics and such. And that meant that she was working in the afternoons and I had a regular daytime job. So 
in reality, it was me that was there with the kids in the afternoons. And, and, uh, and after the divorce, um, they were at, with me half the time. And, and they are now, this year, they are 10 and 14 years old. So mm -hmm. they had, so they had a lot of experience with um, with me being present for you know handball, homework, uh, holidays, uh, trips to the forest. Uh, so there was the the process was like they just executed me, and 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 I, when I think about it, you know if if I had killed, say I, I had. If I was a mass murderer sitting in prison in Norway and the mother had sympathy with me, I would see the kids more often. Mm -hmm. And I and I have a, I have a clean criminal record. There is there is a, well, I, I lost my driver's license once, but that's about it. So uh, it was she started a smear campaign uh, with the. Uh, well, the usual, the usual kind of smear campaign, and and I, I'm part of several groups on Facebook. And in Norway, there is forty six thousand kids that do not have any. Uh, well, they don't see their fathers. Wow, forty six thousand children in Norway. Yeah, that's correct. It's it's actually one of the worst places on earth when it comes to family law, and I'm not kidding, and I'm not exaggerating. These are, these are, you can just Google it. You'll find the numbers like, like this. And, and I have, I've been on the Facebook group, a support group for alienated parents. And it's the same story. There is, there is the, it's just, it's, it's like we're just been given a script, you know, mm -hmm. point one. You go to the child welfare authorities and you have concerns about father. Yeah. And then number two, you you make some sort of a, a victim story that you present to the therapists that are supposed to negotiate deals, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, if a woman is is especially angry or whatever it is uh, she she involves the police and and this is this is the this is where things things turn for me it was like entering into the rabbit hole of uh, what's her name the girl that goes down in the rabbit hole Alice in Wonderland oh, yeah yeah mm -hmm. it was like the world just turned upside down and it was it was like complete madness yes <laughs> Because there was there was uh, there was claims of me being dangerous to her, and as I told the police, I said, "Well, she has spoken exclusively by text messages the last two and a half years. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you give me a restraining order because I don't see her anyway." Yes. Yeah, and and and. And then this just, it just piled up and I was given more restraining orders. And then I had one against my kids. And, and then I started the court case with, with this police matter, still not settled. And all these claims at the same time. So of course it went into a bloody mess, so to say. Uh, but the, the, the police, they, I don't know the English word for this, but when they, they put the, the case to rest and there is nothing else to do about it mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. yeah so they, they, they the did case. they close the, they close the case yeah there was nothing there you know the, the, they had the, my phone they could see all my emails my text messages so there was no evidence for anything and mm -hmm. and uh but that sort of didn't matter because when I started the court case, I was already smeared completely. And, and, and when you have been driven like, like a wild animal 
like I had, then of course you're not balanced and stable and and so of course this went wrong. Um, so I, I, after this psychologist, he, he uh, spent one hour and 10 minutes talking to me. And he didn't see me and the kids together. Not, not for one second did he see yeah. me and the kids. And uh, he ignored what the kids said. And so did the judge. And you're supposed to make a preliminary little investigation between the first and the second meeting. And then you're supposed to make a, a thorough investigation between the second meeting and the court case. Mm -hmm. But he just, he just skipped that. So he, he wrote the case, the, 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 the final report was written on the basis of one and a half hours meeting with me. Mm -hmm. And so it was disastrous. It was a com complete disaster and, and and I just, I just broke down from it, and I have, I have a very good friend. He's a, he's a farmer, and he's, he has four kids of his own, and he, and he sort of took me under his wings, so to say, and helped me. And, and he said, "Well, you can't do anything about this. There is um, thousands and thousands of men." that experienced exactly the same and you will get nowhere and this will kill you. So you either you leave or you die. Wow. Okay. Well, and, and I have to say that I used to work as a project manager in construction business. Mm -hmm. And I had quite a good career. So, so I, I've never been away from work being sick, you know? But when, when, then, when this broke me down, then obviously I couldn't work. Mm. And I had a very good boss at, at that time and she helped me because in Norway, you have this possibility. Well, not everything is bad about Norway, yeah? but you have this possibility to have a pension mm -hmm. permanently for the rest of your life if you cannot mm. work, yeah? And I got it. Okay. And then I thought, well, I can, I can do whatever I want. I can travel all over. I can travel anywhere I want. And, mm -hmm. and I decided, why not? Mediterranean, Croatia. Mm -hmm. So that's where I am. Yeah. Okay. Jonas, do you know where your children are at the moment? Do you know where they live? No, you see, my, my, there is more to this story. And, and I, I could keep talking about it for a long time. But my parents, they decided to cut off my hand and, and join with uh, my ex-wife so oh. uh, so they uh, uh i know i know the schools my kids are going to mm -hmm. and i know the address of uh, my ex-wife and i have an aunt my my mother's sister and she's uh, on my side in this so and when they speak to my grandmother so there is there is a little tiny tiny bit of um, information coming now and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Why does this happen? I mean, this is a frightening figure to say forty six thousand children in Norway are not seeing their fathers, have no contact with their fathers. Why is this happening in your country? I know parental alienation is rife all over the world, and in South Africa where I am as well, and we are aware of certain legal strategies that are used uh, you know where they systematically build a case in order to um, stop contact between uh, a parent and the children and um, I'm just curious to know if if it's a similar thing in Norway oh yeah it's uh, okay let's there is several layers to this but layer one is that um 10 percent of the divorces end in the courts only so 10 percent yeah yeah i think so around that mm -hmm. and and uh you know and the, the the cases that end in the courts they they must have at least one person who is very conflict oriented you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. and and unfortunately it is so that the women are encouraged 
to to maximize that because they have so much to win uh, in this support group for uh, for the alienated parents there is one guy and he uh, you know the woman she would earn more money mm -hmm. by working less because then she could go to the authorities and and claim more money from him so so she would have a, an increase in wages mm -hmm. by, by by stopping to work and 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 it's it's obviously this is about money and it's about revenge that's layer one and layer two is uh you have i would say almost pathological culture of of uh, making women the victims in mm. Norway. It's, it's a, they are so easily victimized. And, and then we have, on top of that, you have this formal structure of uh, the police and the courts where they are, they are instructed to prioritize, let's say domestic violence, mm -hmm. you know, and, if they even have the slightest little rumor, you know, they, they let all the dogs out. There is there is no there is nothing stopping them. So so it's it's and and then you have of course the child welfare authorities as well. And and I've been just discussing this quite a lot because they they have a very high turnover. It's 30% turnover in this service. Mm -hmm. So they hire young women, especially uh, a few men, but not many. And these women, they don't have their own kids. They are in their 20s. They, there is no formal obligation for education. So you can, you, you can say you can go from, from teaching in daycare. And then the next day, you're supposed to handle a case like mine. Well, without any experience or training. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. This is, this is, it's, even Norwegians have a problem understanding how bad this is because they can't believe it. Mm. But this is, this is how it is. And, and then you, you sit there and, and you're supposed to, you're supposed to, to handle uh, the worst personal crisis in your life. Uh, a, a big smear campaign and you're talking to to someone who is who's barely grown it's, it's like talking to a child you know yeah. and, and it, so it's obviously not the right kind of personnel so so there, there is there's a lot of there's a lot of factors playing at the same time that makes Norway, probably one of the absolute worst places in the world when it comes to, to, to the, the rights of children mm -hmm. and the respect of, uh, you know, their human rights and the, 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 the charter for the children in the UN and so forth. It's, it's actually quite disastrous. It's quite interesting that you say that if we're looking at it from a legal point of view, uh, apart from... Uh, human well if you look at the human rights and children's rights that says uh, children are entitled to have a good healthy strong relationship with both their parents is that not um, the same is it not the case in, in Norway is it not um, adhered to in these divorce cases no, no, no this is this is at the crux of the problem because the Norwegian authorities they always claim that they should take the best interest of the child, yeah. Yes. And they have, yeah, and they have, uh, they they disregard the the biological factor of of, uh, of parenting, and this is why they they ended up, I think, I think it's eight or nine times in the European Court of Human Rights. Mm -hmm. So Norway is up there on the top of the list of nations being ruled against on human rights and it's all related to child welfare authorities and and the the lack of respect for children's uh rights to 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 uh to a family life with their biological parents yes yeah 
Do you know what the divorce rate is in Norway? What percentage of marriages get divorced? It used to be 50-50, but that's, that's a few years ago. I don't know exactly now, but when, when I was in, in my 30s, it was about 50-50. Yes. It seems to be pretty much in line with the, the general rate all over the world. It's between 40 and 70%. Um, yeah. the divorce rate. So we're looking at half of the children in, in Norway, and it's similar to other places in the world. It's, it's, yeah. it's actually shocking. It's shocking that the systems, we have the constitutions, we have the human rights and everything in place, and yet uh, children suffer so much. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and it's, it's uh, you know, it's political and, and it's also ideological because they have this, well, to put it this way, I come from a family where my mother, she, she was a very hard line feminist. Mm -hmm. And I, and I grew up with, with uh, a lot of, uh, well, let's say, sympathy for for this uh way of thinking that you should obviously have the equal rights or, or equal opportunities so to say yes and and when i talked to my grandmother there there was you know obviously there was a need for a change to to have the same opportunities for education and not be discriminated against in the workplace mm -hmm. and and so there was a lot of legitimate things to do, and uh, but they they sort of drifted away from this, and and it became uh, anti men mm. and the destruction of the nuclear family, and and this is um, I have a friend on the Facebook, and he, he gave me this quote, and he said the the uh, the smallest like the smallest brick or piece you build society on is the family yes and and and, and i thought in my head that well yeah and this can be split like the atoms but if the reaction goes wild you you might end with exploding the whole society so yes. we need to be careful about these things it's a very sad thing and it's complex. Uh, it is a, a literal uh, assault on the family as a unit or, or, the, or the traditional societal uh, norms that we have in most of our cultures about family and it being a unit. It's incredible how much that is, has been break, broken down and even undermined in many yeah. ways. So um, it's interesting for me that you said the majority of the cases in Norway is also uh, women who are alienating their children from, from the fathers. That seems to be uh, uh, the norm in most parts of the world. And I've always, yeah. had, uh, I've always been of the opinion that women being the largest number or the highest percentage of alienators, so to speak, could very well be, or it's definitely a factor that Traditionally, in divorces, the children were mostly given to the mothers as primary caregivers or custody, as it used to be called in the past. So that would account for the high number of women being um, identified as alienators, because traditionally, fathers very seldom got custody or primary care of the children. But that has been changed over the last uh, several decades. It's been gradually changing. And I would like to know in your experience, um, to what effect to, or to what degree that is still uh, the case in Norway, or um, do you think the majority of women being alienators is still because mostly women do that? Or would the, the, the history of um, giving mothers more custody or care uh, than fathers be a factor in Norway or in your, in your, in your experience? This is, a, this is a very difficult question. Because it's, you know, in 80% of the cases, the women get the custody and the, the fathers are just brushed off like uh, uh, yeah, a visiting parent when it comes to the court. So it's, it's, it's difficult, but there is, there is a little but here. And that is, 
there is there there has come to surface in the news uh, 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 quite a few cases actually of of uh, men alienating the mother mm -hmm. while having the kids to themselves. Mm -hmm. So and and this is why this is why this issue has sort of broken the the barrier of silence in Norway because oh you know women can be alienated oh this is a problem but i think i think if i'm a, if i was to guess uh i think that okay if you, if you look at the di distribution of, of of mental illness mm -hmm. there is no there is no there is no preference on gender you would find uh you would find you know equally many with with uh, problems of empathy, so to say. You would find that equally many on both ends when it comes to antisocial behavior. You, mm -hmm. you, you just, it's just expressed in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, men use more physical violence and women use more uh, manipulation, lies, smearing and so forth. And I think that unfortunately there is, you know, maybe some five, six, seven percent of the population as a whole, where you find some of the manipulators and, and those who have a little challenge when it comes to, to uh, empathize with, with others than themselves. And this is expressed, you know, as, uh, uh, there is, for me, it's it's hard to imagine someone doing anything to me that would hurt me more than this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you, if you really want if you really want to hurt someone, then then you destroy this person's uh, relationship to the the people he loved the most yes. and in my case that was my children mm -hmm. so I, I don't think in the end i don't think that the reason for this is feminism or law i think that um i think feminism and law sort of opens the gates for this kind of behavior mm -hmm. to, to 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 bloom and 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 not be contained that, that's how I see it. Okay. So if it's a result of divorce, um, it's about conflict, the high conflict and the revenge, like you said yourself, because the majority of people in society are not, uh, don't have personality disorders or aren't, you know, borderline personalities or uh, have got pathology. So the majority of people are, are not doing it because there's, mental health problems it's because of anger and resentment bitterness um being out for revenge then i'm trying to get to the point is can we you like you said it's the law it's feminism um there's a whole lot of things at play here and i want to get to what is the underlying the underlying cause of this is it people's inability to handle a conflict or inability to deal with the divorce and everything that is involved there? Well, I'm I'm not an expert. I, I would certainly hope to be one one day, but but in my experience, it's um, when you shut down communications, that's where you start the war. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, and, and I think that this mechanics of denial and uh, this mechanics of blaming, you, you always, this hurts, you know, this hurts. It must be someone else's fault. I have, I, there is someone else I can blame for me mm -hmm. feeling this hurt, you know? And this is, this is a very, this is a trap. It's very easy to 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 trigger when when you are emotionally down and you're going through a bad time like a divorce and so so I think 
but there is there is there is this little element you know that okay and i don't think that you should say well you have obviously people with personality disorders mm. you know obviously they are like bright clear as day it's no problem yes. seeing this is but but you have when you look at people's psychology that they they have you know tendencies in 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 some direction of mm -hmm. of, of the, the bad sides sides of of the personality and and unfortunately you know it is this is why they do military training as they do they 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 force you to be hungry, tired, and and you haven't slept for a long time. Why? Because they want to to force you into a position where you start, you know, expressing these things yes. that, yeah, exactly. And and when you get into a position where your life is falling apart, it's it's obvious obviously not the case that this is where you are at your best. Yeah. So I, I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, now, yes. But uh, I hear what you're saying because it brings me to the litigation and, and the processes that lawyers use in the litigation, um, the tactics and the, the underhanded strategies that they use um, because litigation is acrimonious by nature. So they're putting a husband and a wife um, opposite each other as adversaries and they start a fight and there has yeah. to be a winner in this fight. And like you said, uh, breaking you down um, systematically taking things away from you, it's isolating you, and frustrate you know uh, frustrating your contact with your children, um, and obviously putting a lot of financial strain on you because you have to defend yourself in this whole litigation process. It's all part of a plan to get you to a point where you break down and you well, I think actually so, actually, it... give up, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, but well, I actually think you're right because this. We were not, we were not that far apart. Mm -hmm. You know, we could talk, but when when we were, the more help we got, the more uh, accentuated the the problems got to be, mm -hmm. and and that's sort of surprising for me that it, it just got worse and worse. Mm -hmm. The more people that got involved in in trying to help us solve the problem, and I want to finish this by. I made a YouTube video about it, but I'll do it very short for you now. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the man, the woman, and then you have the conflict here in the middle, and then the 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 feminist perspective is is almost exclusively to say that okay, the woman is the victim, the man is the oppressor or the aggressor, and the, then we have the conflict in the middle, mm -hmm. and then you sort of you, you sort of forget the child. The child is just uh, part of the furniture in, in this room, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't see it. Mm -hmm. but, but the way I see it is that uh, the victim is the child and the, the, the oppressor is the conflict. It's the yes. conflict. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the conflict is, is what is making the, the, the child hurt. And, and 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 so it's 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 the feminists they look at look at it like like a man woman issue and but I would say no it's not it's it's conflict it child issue and then then you have to ask yourself okay who drives the conflict what is the conflict about mm -hmm. and how how can we how can we make this conflict less pronounced yes how can we reverse it. But but since since the conflict between my me and my ex wife was well she would probably say something else but I I would say it was seventy five to eighty percent economy yeah but they they the, in child welfare authorities they 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 don't want to talk about economy who wants to talk about economy yeah. you know so 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 the the problem kept going and it, it wasn't resolved and in the end you know in the end oh yeah one more thing when they calculate child welfare child benefits in norway they look at how much money you earn 
mm-hmm. and how much money she earns. They don't look at anything else. So if you have debts that are sort of killing you, you know, you you mm-hmm. you, and then they they look at the paper and they say, well, you can pay nine hundred euros per month. And then I say, no, I can't. This means that I end up on the streets. And then, do you think this is fair? I said to the to the people calculating these benefits. And then she said, well, we don't consider people that have a lot of money in their bank accounts either. So on average, this is fair. Goodness gracious. How can yeah. you do that? You've got to look at each individual case on its own. No, no, no. no. So, 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 you know, I, <laughs> it's, it's just, uh, it's just, uh, it's disastrous. But I, so I ended up <laughs> on a quad bike and I, uh, I, I had this pension and I, and I escaped from Norway through Europe. And I came to Croatia without, I didn't, I, I didn't even have any furniture. Everything was just destroyed. And, but I'm, I've, I've sort of managed to scrape myself up because I have very good friends. And I, I met a woman that I'm living with and it's, it's super good. And I'm out walking in the mountains and I'm walking in the weekends and I'm out on the beach and, so I'm, I'm, I'm sort of uh, getting myself back on feet and I'm preparing because I know for a fact, you know, that my kids, they have, they have in the back of their minds, they have memories of, of being read to in the bed, like hundreds of times. And, and um, they, they were fighting. You know, they were fighting between them. Like, who is to, to, to sleep closest to me? Mm. They had big fights over this. And, and, uh, and uh, I, they had their own beds and their own rooms that they never used it. They, no. They, <laughs> so, and I told them, like, try. You should sleep in your own beds, yeah? And, uh, but no, in the middle of the night, they both came, you know, and then... Uh, to sleep in my bedroom so no they have they have a lot of good memories of father and at some point they will be grown up and uh, I have no doubt that um, if I am strong enough which it looks like I am you know to avoid Suicide, you know, uh, alcohol, drunkenness, uh, loneliness. Uh, if I can avoid all these things and just stay strong and hopefully do some research on, on this subject, then they, they will meet a father to be proud of. And then we will connect again. I'm, I'm pretty sure about it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that, that's beautiful. Um... Those are beautiful words, Jonas. It must be terribly, terribly uh, difficult and traumatizing to go through what you've gone through and to just literally uh, have to flee and and start rebuilding your life from somewhere. Uh, I think that's a hell of a lot that you've had to deal with. And um, I must uh, compliment you. Sorry, the word went out of my head. I must compliment you. On going this far and still standing strong it can't be easy it really can't be easy just tell me uh briefly are your children boys or girls or are they of both no they're both girls they're both girls and it sounds yeah. to me like they were very close to you uh, and you to them um, and like you said you have good memories uh, you both all three of you have good memories that you can um, hang on to in the meantime just as a matter of interest, what does one do in your situation now? Have you decided to stop fighting um, or are you just pausing and recovering and um, re-strategizing almost, uh, if I can use that word? 
or do you give up oh, and stop fighting um, and wait for your children to grow up? Well, there is no reason to take this to court. Mm. Well, that's that's just a waste of time and money. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's hopeless. Um, maybe there was there was they have a revision of of this uh, law. Uh, they are doing a revision now, mm -hmm. but you know uh, I have settled in Croatia. I'm, I'm I don't want to go back to Norway. Um, they wouldn't give me custody. It's it's impossible for me to fix this now. It's because everything got destroyed to a level where I just had to find a way to survive. And yes, but I think, but I think that uh, they cannot do anything much. I think if I just go to Norway and visit my children at school mm -hmm. in maybe next year or the year after, because then they would be. 12 and 16 and uh and then i can speak to them and i can give them a lot of photos and i can i have a youtube channel i can say well look at my youtube channel mm -hmm. and then you know maybe i can reconnect with them regardless of what everyone else thinks mm -hmm. yeah okay there's hope there's always hope and just yeah. in 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 closing, what what do you do to get through the special dates like like their birthdays and Father's Day that's coming up and, and Christmas? What I don't know which ones you celebrate. What what do you do for yourself? How do you help yourself to go through those days? Because you don't know where your children are, you don't have contact with them. How does a father do that? Well, I, uh, I uh, make videos on YouTube and I, uh, I make little pilgrimages for them and I say a little prayer. That's beautiful. Yeah, so they can see that if ever they were able to. Yeah, they can so. see you and your life on YouTube. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. Jonas, thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, thank you. I really appreciate it, and it's. Uh, I wish you all of the best, and strength, and good health, and a speedy recovery, and um, I hope that you will be able to reconnect with your children soon. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you so much. Time. I'd love to nice talk to you some more. Okay. Yeah. You, okay. Keep well. Do take care, hey? Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah.